So yeah, I'm at the Trans Wellness Conference. So, today was the first day of the conference, and today I went by myself. Um, as you can probably tell um, from the weird uh, like Dutch angle that we have, because I uh, have my camera just sitting by its lonesome in the middle of the center console, because I have no free hands and I have to drive. Uh, so Rachel had to work today. Um, the Munchkin is at daycare, but. I wanted to go and um, go for some of the opening ceremonies. I um, got to see the flag raising, which was nice. I met a bunch of people in real life for the first time, um, which was pretty neat. And just got to mingle a little bit. And it was interesting. And I heard um, from some people who have been there before um, that to some extent, they're not actually going for the panel so much um, because they're further along in their transition, um, which I find to be an interesting thing. Um, I did go to a panel about um, FFS, um, which was interesting, but I, I kind of understand where people are coming from because today I actually wound up going um, to the opening keynote, um, and then the flag raising, which obviously was outside, and then just that one panel, and then afterwards I was kind of like just milling about for a while, um, which was interesting, um, and so from, to an outsider, it might seem as if perhaps I was kind of wasting the day because I was not necessarily going to all the panels, but um, there's much more to it than just what is presented in the conference rooms. Um, those are important, those are great, and, what, and if you're looking for information, they're very informative. But one of the things that I find is that, is that the conference has this secondary um, purpose, which is really kind of a networking event. When I was at the flag raising, I was talking to Samantha from Trans IRL, and, um, and I had said to her that, um, that there were so many people that I was meeting for the first time that I know from their online presence. And she pointed out to me that on the one hand, the trans community is a large community. There's a lot of us, but at the same time, there's not. It is a very small community in that it seems like everybody knows each other, but at the same time, people don't actually know each other one-on-one -on -one in real life. So it was interesting to get to just talk with people and kind of put a real person to the pictures and, you know, Instagram stories that you see. As far as today, there, there weren't a lot of um, panels that really caught my attention. Um, there were some that I thought about going to, but, but I wasn't so committed to them that I actually wound up going. But I think ultimately my time was well spent in walking around, getting to know some people. I had people say to me that they enjoyed my videos, um, 
I was talking to um, Faith and Kath from the Gender Rebels, and Kath was like, I love your videos! And it just kind of blew my mind. I'm like, you actually saw my videos? That's insane. Which, you know, I put them out there so people will watch them, but it's... You don't necessarily um, always get feedback. So that was nice. But tomorrow um, and Saturday, there are some more panels. And it'll be nice to have Rachel come along with me tomorrow um, and spend time together um, learning some new stuff and um, meeting some new people. And I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, awaits in day two. Oh, I was going to say you probably put it right there. Oh, it won't, like, catch car sounds and stuff like that. It's going to catch car sounds regardless. Okay. So, it is day two, and we are heading down the Atlantic City Expressway, going back to Philly. Um, Rachel is with me today. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, I mean, this is our second year. What are you looking forward to? I know that yesterday I was talking about um, kind of spending some more time like meeting people as opposed to the... Um, well, yes, you're a minor celebrity now. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Jason. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's my brother's exit. Hello. Um, so what, do you, what is it that you're looking forward to this year? Uh, not being nervous and terrified like last year. <laughs> uh, no, I think I'm just, we're just going to get more out of it as a whole. Um, I am also, uh, today at least, unencumbered by a uh, child. I mean, that so, helps. Um, and there's really only a couple of, of um, workshops that I want to go to today, so I'm hoping to spend some time today um, looking at tables, talking to people, uh, shamelessly plugging the podcast, <laughs> you know, the stuff that everybody else is going to be doing there. Yeah, exactly. Know? But yeah, tomorrow I think we kind of have, looking at the schedule, I kind of have a uh, packed day of, you know, different seminars and stuff, which is always the way on Saturday because, you know, they cram more stuff into Saturday because that's the day that everybody's off of work and, right. you know, gonna show up. So I think today I'll just spend some time, you know, wandering. The one thing I noticed looking at the schedule this year, some of the things we talked about last year that we were hoping they would have... They have um, added. They've yeah. added. So... The, well, it's an evolving conference. You it know? is. Um, so they've got that. It's because they were listening to you. <laughs> that's right. You're an influencer. That's that's it. Mm -hmm. But they and they've also got some more stuff talking about um, families mm -hmm. and um, people with children um, who are either parent or child or both are trans. So. And I think they did have a little bit of that last year, but we were more focused on. It was kind of a newer thing for us, sure. so we were more focused on physical aspects of transition and and that kind of stuff. We were like looking more at like the surgery stuff. We were looking more at the and um, you know how to navigate that. And now I think, um, at least for me, my focus is more on. Um, being a good ally, advocacy, um, larger community issues and things like that. One of the things that I'm really uh, looking forward to this afternoon is about, um, about family, about um, talking to kids about gender and sexual orientation right. and, you know, how do you present, you know, this spectrum when in school and in everyday life in general, everything is very binary. We've navigated, you know, 
a double Mother's Day and the absence of Father's Day through preschool. And her preschool's been very good about uh, that. But I'm sure it's going to start to get to, you know, some questions soon. Right now we're obsessed with the Baby Shark song. And uh, for me, it's noticeable... For, for me, it's noticeable that even in something as inane and stupid as that, right? it's mommy shark and daddy right. shark. Yeah. It's a... That's crossed my mind. It's a thing that's pervasive, so how do we, you know, navigate that? So I'm interested in that, and uh, I'll be looking forward to that uh, presentation. I think today's going to be a little bit of a shorter day, but... Um, I'm looking forward to... Yes, we have obligations we have with obligations. Our, our, uh, our daughter's preschool. But I'm looking forward to building some connections, doing some networking, yeah. things like that. Um, you know. See, we've leveled up. We're doing the deep dive. It's time for networking. I'm, you know, looking forward to a little different experience than last year. Yeah. So we will catch you guys uh, later. section by the security um, spot on the corner of Arch and, um, is that Arch and Arch Street? Uh, yeah, sure. Anyway, you guys know it. It's a really big trans flag. So we're going to be over there. Um, so if you want to come say hi, come say hi. I'll see you there. Bye. Bye. So it's day three of the conference, and um, this has been the busiest day so far. Um, Rachel and the baby are here, um, and she's been good for the most part. The, the baby, not Rachel. Rachel's been fine. Um, it's middle of the day now, so we uh, went to some panels this morning. Uh, just had lunch. Just did a little bit of a meetup um, with some people, and. Um, now we're going to go to a conference about um, doing proposals for for sessions for future conferences. So, sounds interesting. It might be something that we might want to do. So, let's see. And uh, check back in with you guys a little bit later. So yeah, she was kind of starting to lose a little bit, so I guess it was nap time. Good. Maybe she'll sleep to the last panel that we have. Our recording. We're here. It is the end of day two, and we are on our way home. I just stopped and got some gas. Um, so what did you think? 
um, overall about this year. Since it's, you've decided to be the star, um, I, I it, it was a good it was a good conference. I what did I think? It was a good conference. What did you think, baby? She thought it was delightful. I know. She loved all of her attention. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, today we actually had the baby with us. Um, so, of course, most of the attention today was on her. Because, you know... Because she walked around saying hi to everybody yeah, she and blowing around. kisses at everybody. She's, yeah, she's the queen of the, of the conference. So, one of the things I did, um, I did take note of is that several of the panels this year, like we were saying yesterday, did, um, seem like somebody was listening to the suggestions we threw out in the universe about having panels about, um, partners and families and not just necessarily, um, focused on, um, persons who are transitioning themselves. I appreciate that it was a little more expansive this year with regards to trying to include the narratives of everybody involved um, in a transition because it's not just um, the trans person, everybody around them it has to make a transition as well. So um, I thought that was good. Well, what were your thoughts about the partner parents? It was interesting. I think um, I liked it, but it was also an attempt to sell a book. <laughs> so not and not that that's a bad thing, um, because I think that the um, presenters is genuine in her concern for partners and 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 that. I guess I was hoping to get more tools and thing is the topic is too large for an hour workshop that makes sense but I was hoping to get more you know tools and stuff like that and I think part of it also is they they didn't restrict it and I'm not saying that they had to that was the choice that they made and in general I don't like when the booklet says you know this is restricted to hello this is restricted to you know such and such a group because then you are go, well do I fit in that well do I am I sure that I fit into that group well if I think I fit you okay you're right yeah okay well so if you're saying, well, I think I fit into that group, but is the moderator going to think that I fit into this group? Like, yeah, I, right. I think, so in general, I don't like the restrictions, but in the case of the partners panel, I think that, or workshop, it wasn't really a panel. I think that it impeded Discussion. people wanting to share. I got you. Because if their partners are sitting next to them, they didn't want to say anything that maybe they would have said if it was solely partners and they felt like they had a safer space. So in that case, I would have said maybe it would have been more productive if it had been restricted. Also, I was hoping for, like I said, for some more tools some for partners, guidance some guidance more, to you know, how, how to deal with things, uh, strategies, um, pitfalls, uh, things like that. Um, those things were teased, but those things are in the book. Right. So don't get me wrong. I think that it was good. And if anything, it highlighted for me, judging by the reaction of the people in the room, the desperate, desperate need that partners have for a safe space. I mean, because it's an emotional topic and stuff like that, 
but I think it's also because as partners we don't necessarily realize how much stuff is inside that we don't have a safe space or don't feel like we have a safe space to just release right my main takeaway is yes it's the trans wellness conference and it's about trans people and their wellness but part of trans people's wellness is their partner's wellness as well one of the things that kind of caught my ear in that panel um, was that she said exactly what we said on um, the podcast that we had done about self care about, pu about putting your own oxygen mask on like in an airplane um, because if you aren't taking care of yourself you can't take care of somebody else and the other thing that she said that I will say and I have said this I have felt this and I have felt it more than I have said it because sometimes saying it seems shitty you need to make time and space as a couple to not deal yeah. with transition. I think that it's, it's very easy um, in situations like this because it is uh, an intense, like, all-encompassing shift in your life. It's very easy to stop being a person <laughs> yeah, right you, right you become you become the transition the transition right and not, and not necessarily um you, you stop living which is really counterintuitive because the whole point is that you're trying to be more authentic but if you know you, you forget who you are because you're so focused on everything is about the process it's very easy to not actually be having a fulfilling life, a fulfilling um, partnership. Right. Um, the other thing that I took away uh, that I think is really important is that people need to remember, everybody needs to remember the process of going through transition is not linear. I think that to some extent the it's from I know from the perspective my perspective as a, a trans person that part of your mind's always looking for the other shoe to drop with everybody around you so I think that it can be very easy to um, latch on to any kind of Vicky. negative feelings or emotions yes, you have a um, any kind of she wants everybody to know she's got pink. Yeah, it's very important. Um, any, any kind of negative feelings or emotions, and then um, kind of go, see, I knew you weren't being accepted. Um, and, you know, it, it's a normal thing. You know, right. it, it's difficult. And sometimes some people are assholes about it. Um, but any normal functioning person it's going to have a hard time. It's hard as the trans person to deal with all the changes um, that you're going through. And it's difficult for everybody else around you as well. And I will say one thing that I have heard from every single presenter, and I'm so grateful for, and I really truly think that they, they actually mean it, is that every single presenter has given contact information and said, please reach out. Yeah. I want to hear from you. I know we can't talk about everything that everybody wants to talk about in the panel because there's just not enough time, but I do care and I do want to hear from you and I do. So, I mean, so I feel like even if I didn't get the time, we didn't cover the topics that I would have wanted to cover and didn't have the time. I feel like if I really had a question, issue, concern, wanted a take on something, I do feel like I could reach out to them and I do feel like they would respond. Now so, obviously, we are not in the car anymore. 
We are not. No. Uh, no. The uh, <laughs> the camera turned off um, in uh, mid sentence. Yes. Um, Stupid technology. Yeah. Just as I started uh, trying to make a point, it said uh, "Go to hell," and so here we are the next day. Um, look, we just came back from the pool, so we're nice and relaxed now. But um. Yes. So. Sorry, my hair is a fright. Whatever. My hair is completely different. Like I had a wavy, long, cur luxurious. Cur you no, know, yeah. Now I've got poof. Poof. So, yeah. Anyway. Thank you, poof. Thanks. So one of the things besides the um, panels that um, I really noticed this year was that um, people who were at the tables were pretty diverse um, and it wasn't just um, people pushing you know products or things like that there were a lot of people there that were acting as a resource um, yes that yes. there were um, or for example um, one of the people there was um, from the Philadelphia um, uh, Anyway. Um, so one of the people that was there um, was actually um, from a group that is um, oversees a trans chamber of commerce in Philadelphia um, that not only has businesses that are run by people who are trans but also connects um, employees with employers um, when the employees are trans and you know having difficulty finding work, so what's the matter? And literally, like a couple tables down from them, the Methodists were there, um, the progressive wing of the Methodist Church. Um, talk about how the church is there for you. Um, they were doing um, renewal of baptisms um, for people who um, had transitioned, had a new name. Yeah. Um, and there were lots of different organizations there that were making a point to let the people in attendance know that they actually um, have a community and have resources to go to. Um, I know here we're kind of in like a resource desert um, and a lot of people feel the same way but it was good to have different people there um, trying to make that point that we're here to, get, to be a resource for you. Um, in addition to uh, the diversity of the um, tablers and vendors and stuff like that, um, there were a lot of um, different panels this year, I think. Um, I mean, the first year that we went, I feel like it was a lot about, you know, surgery medical transition medical transition yeah. you know top surgery bottom surgery befores and afters and you know post-op stuff and you know uh facial feminization and uh, everything that had to do with surgeries i think uh this year there was a lot i mean these those still existed but um this year i think there was a lot um of different uh kind of panels um uh like there were panels on um financial stability and stuff like that that were um i mean not necessarily all about um trans people but certainly were important for trans people because i mean it's expensive it's Transitioning expensive. Is expensive and also you know Trans people do experience financial instability also because of uh, discrimination, discrimination um, inability to get work, underemployment, you know, things like that. But there was, so there was a panel about it, um, which was good, I mean, and, and different. Um, yeah, then they had a panel about um, how to write a proposal in order to have your own panel in order to have a workshop. Right, in order to have a workshop, which I think was awesome. Um, because we had been talking about um, 
some panels that we would like to see and stuff like that. And then suddenly, here's this um, proposal writing uh, workshop um, that was given by two of the people that are that work for Mazzoni Center yeah. that are on the review board. review board and do the kind of logistical work for the uh, conference. So, um, and I think like they were talking about, um, I think the reason that we see a lot of the panels about, you know, surgery and, and stuff like that is because most people feel well, like they have to have some kind of credential in order to be a presenter. They have to, you know, be in social work or be um, a doctor or be, you know, have some kind of expertise expertise with a letter after their name. And, and I think part of that comes from the fact that, you know, before it was the wellness conference, it was the health conference. So I think a lot of people have in their head, you know, that idea of being some sort of medical expert um, in order to have um, your own workshop, your own panel, your own, you know, discussion. And I think what they're trying to do now is really have a more holistic approach to trans wellness. And that includes a range of topics. And one of the things that they said was that your experience is enough. Um, right. You know, lots of people have um, do what we do, have YouTube videos, have podcasts, um, and, you know, we all think that, you know, you're qualified to do that and put out your opinion and, um, share information that way, but when it comes to a conference and, you know, then you're not good enough. Right. So they're really encouraging, you know, people who are attending to participate in a more, in a more full way as presenters. Right. And if you see something that is that you find is missing, then maybe you're the person to present on it. Um, and they said, you know, somebody asked about statistically how many um, proposals do they get and how many do they select? And they were like, well, you know, we get a little above 300 and we have about 150 um, workshops, which is about 50%, which they were like, don't be discouraged by that. Those, and I was like, hey, yeah, I was pretty. totally encouraged by that because I was thinking, you know, they probably get like tens of thousands of proposals and then they have to whittle it down to 150. So, you know, I'll take those odds. Um, but so that's something that we're thinking about for the future. And I know a lot of um, your friends that you... Um, met up with and stuff like that also attended the the uh uh panel on that so you know maybe you'll see some familiar faces and stuff yeah. like that at the next trans wellness conference i mean all in all i think it was um a very enriching experience i think in a way more this year than last year uh and probably because we're in a different you know place right. with transition and this is not quite as new and scary. I mean, trust me, there's still some scary shit. But I mean, <laughs> but um, it's not quite as new and scary. Um, and I think I feel a little bit more a part of the, you know, community, a part of the group. Um, and we're not so focused on, you know, what does transition mean right. so much as you know living as part of the community now and i think uh i think we're going to speak to that a little bit more in our next podcast yes yeah. yes so podcast yeah. all about it if you're not subscribed already i don't know where you've been and what you're doing but you should go do that now yes do it do it you won't be sorry <laughs> because i'm told that i am hilarious and you get all this time with Shannon. You don't get that much time with me. So come. Subscribe to the podcast. Listen to me. You can always have your own YouTube channel. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Anyway. I think, uh, 
that, was, that was good. That was synchronized. That it was, was synchronized. synchronized sipping that was not, you know, no. in any way planned. We didn't practice that, no. But uh, so I think that's uh, I think that's a wrap on on this year's conference. You know, this is still under my, the auspices of my um, my workout and my losing weight and my. Uh, we did I spend did a, a fair amount of time walking, especially on Saturday. So, yeah, so you know, it still counts. Hopefully, uh, I lost a couple pounds. I have to get you, go and check. But um, I think it's time for dinner. So that was a subtle hint for me to get in the kitchen and make her some chicken. I can't do anything right now. That is, that is true. She's pinned by a yeah. small child. So, um, I guess that's that. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, thanks for tuning in. And uh, see you around. See you around.